Hi, Mike Nisley with 47products.com. Uh, just back after the launch of the PETA sled with a, an update video. Uh, I know we don't have the Ruger Precision Rimfire Rifle here in the background. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, but I want to answer a couple questions that I've gotten and then also go over some ideas that uh, we've come up with uh, myself and the community around the PETA sled. So the, one of the questions I got is, how do you know if you've got the PETA sled or you have the mall rat sled? And the easy way to know that is just to simply look at the top. You see that? channel that goes from the front to the back that's a PETA sled. The Mallrat sled does not have that. You can see the Mallrat sled just has a tray at the top here. I'm going to go ahead and put the Mallrat sled up into this Ruger American Rimfire and I want to show you the difference between the two when it comes to feeding the round. Now the idea with the Mallrat sled is that I wanted it to feed the way that the magazine does and that is the bolt catches the back of the round, and then as the round goes forward and hits uh, the chamber, the back of the round will come up and behind the extractor. And it's now captured by the bolt and the extractor, and it goes into battery. Now at that point, we can go ahead and eject that round. Now, the PETA sled is a little bit different. The PETA sled, when I put a round on it, that back of the, of the round is up substantially higher. And the reason for that is we want to get it as straight as it goes forward and gets fed into the, uh, fed into the, the chamber as we possibly can. So the PETA sled is a lot more of a direct path, whereas the Mallrat sled is a much more angled path. And that is necessary so that way I can get up and behind that extractor. Now on the Ruger American rifle, that's not as big of a deal uh, that it feeds that way, but on the 1022, from my perspective, that bolt getting pushed home by the spring fast, I wanted it to go up and uh, underneath the extractor. I didn't want the bolt slamming forward hitting this and the extractor coming over the edge of the rim with every time that uh, you're feeding around in. So that's why I designed it the way that I did. So some people have been asking me, uh, especially people with the target model of the Ruger American Rimfire, ones that have a, a more of a, 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 a tight chamber on it, um, they are seeing a bit of an issue as they're coming forward with this and that angle being such that it is, that when they get to this point, they feel like the nose is hitting at 12 o'clock on the chamber um, and it's kind of being drug across the top of the chamber. So they want to have a more direct feed. So why can't we just use this? Well, unfortunately the issue is that the design that I had to come up with for the PETA sled, I had to enlarge this nub on the front. This locking lug here on the front had to be enlarged. That way it would lock up properly in the Ruger Precision Rimfire. And you can see that if you put them side by side, you can see the size difference in that lug. It is substantially different you know, as far as the height. Now this difference also gives us the solution. So yes, you can use the PETA sled if you file this nub down. And that's what I've done on this one. So again, I just hit it with a file um, slowly. Don't have to go, don't go crazy because it, you'll actually gum up your, your file if you go too fast on this uh, since it is a plastic, just nice and slow. Take a little bit off of it. You can see from a height perspective, I'm only taking maybe half of a millimeter off of it. It's really not too much and you can actually see right here uh, I had inserted this into a, a Ruger American Rimfire and uh, you can see I got it stuck in there. I had to put a screwdriver in and push so that way I could get this pin to push back toward into the into the, uh, the uh, sled so that way I could get it to eject but in filing it off now I am able to put that up into the Ruger American Rimfire. I can put a round down onto that tray and you can see that nice smooth forward motion is exactly what we would expect. Now you can see I've not pulled the, the bolt handle down so I've not taken it all the way up into battery and we'll see that difference. You can see again our extractor hasn't gone over the edge of that rim yet so it's not able to eject it. Now if I put it forward go ahead and lock it down after it were fired, you can see it will eject just fine. So it does go over the rim once it pushes it up into battery, uh, but that is that big difference between the way that these feeds. Very, very smooth, straight feeding, more angled feeding, so that way it goes up and under the extractor 
Um, again, with a 1022, I think it's pretty important uh, if you're going to let the, the bolt just slam home uh, that it goes up and underneath. Um, if you are going to use the pita sled in a 1022, same thing, this needs filed away, it would be my suggestion that you ride the bolt home. So you're going to let the bolt come up on your with your finger going forward, pushing it into the chamber uh, in order to uh, maybe uh, lessen the stress to the round uh, as it goes forward in that 1022, but the, the pita sled could be used. Again, you're all big boys and girls. You make your own decisions. Guns are inherently dangerous things, uh, but make the choice that you feel is most appropriate for you, given your circumstances. My suggestion is the, ten, is the Mallrat sled for the 1022 um, and uh, really the Ruger American Rimfire. It works great in my, my Ruger American Rimfires. Only if you have the target model, what I even say, consider uh, going over to the PETA sled. Am I going to make a change to the PETA sled so that way we have something for the 1022 and the Ruger American Rimfires? Am I going to make one with a, with a shorter lug? You know, honestly, right now I don't plan on it. Uh, I can make that change if it's necessary, if it calls for it. I'll let you all tell me, you know, is the market there? You know, maybe I'll, I'll put a, a bounty out and say, you know, if I get 20 orders, then yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll make, the, make a run of those. Um, but there'll be limited quantity, limited colors. Um, and again, you all tell me. Tell me what, what you want. Do you want to see a PETA that is, uh, you know, filed down here specifically for the American Rimfire and the uh, 1022s that with the with the uh, more target grade or match grade chambers let me know <laughs> message me uh, you know submit a comment with a video email me at mike at 47 products.com and we'll uh, we'll go from there uh, I want to take a moment and say thank you to everybody who ordered uh, really great uh, seeing the uh, the reaction for this I knew that there was a lot of pent-up demand uh, I have uh, seen a, a massive uh, following in, in Australia. Thank you, Australia. You have eclipsed Canada as my second highest uh, international shipping, uh, or my highest international shipping. Uh, next to the U.S., you, you guys have, have ordered more than really any other international uh, location combined. Uh, thank you, Australia. <laughs> you all are doing great. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, as far as the uh, the rest of the the feedback, again, have had really really good feedback. The only uh, complaints that I've had were again just specific to, you know, the the uh, Ruger American Rimfire uh, and the the 1022 with those those really tight chambers. Uh, some people really wanted to have this solution for it, uh, so uh, we we've talked uh, quite uh, quite a bit about that. And like I said, we did come up with a solution, so that's been uh, interesting uh, working with those individuals as well. Um, overall, I, I would say it's been a very successful launch. I uh, really uh, would love to see, you know, pictures and video back. So, you know, reply back with, uh, you know, your, your findings out at the range. Uh, it's been absolutely fantastic. Uh, I'm so thankful that I have this opportunity to meet all of you. I, I've talked to so many different people uh, really around the globe uh, about these products. It has really been, uh, I think, the best part about this project is, is just all the people that I've met. Uh, so again, thank you all very much. Uh, thank you for uh, your continued interest in the pro uh, the products, and uh, you know keep me updated if there's anything else that's out there that uh, you're interested in. Um, it's because of you that I make these things. You know, I got uh, I got beat up forever <laughs> on this uh, no excuses sled for the uh, the Savage Mark II uh, series rifles before I finally got out the door. But it was again because of you all that that that, that product exists. So I. Uh, I really appreciate it. You all are fantastic. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye.